Phil Spencer had some pretty interesting things to say about the state of Xbox and their first party offerings and Xbox as a platform in general. Xbox has had a rough go of it uh, almost forever, it seems like. But I think a lot of the things that they're facing now and a lot of the issues that they have now point back to a period in time where they themselves just didn't get it done. There's almost this feeling that the position that they're in now somehow hasn't been exasperated or even created by themselves in the past. And this interview that Phil Spencer gave, I agree with a lot that he said, and I found it to be uh, pretty candid, and it wasn't something that I expected to hear from Phil Spencer as the guy who's just supposed to say things uh, that are positive. He gets paid to do that. I expect that to happen. It's the people that don't get paid that are strange to me that do that. And during this interview with some people who presumably don't get paid to you know consistently make everything look great but do it anyway he said some things that were pretty interesting and i want to go into what he said first let's actually listen to what it is he said and i want you to pay attention to everything that he says we're not in the business of out consoling sony or out consoling nintendo um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us and i know that will upset a ton of people but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have um in certain cases very very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um that kind of make being xbox hard for us as a team that's on us not on anybody else our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first-class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform, but we are not in a position, and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're gonna win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people, like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console, are already a member of one of the three ecosystems and their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen. When you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft, like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not gonna happen. So I think it's pretty telling when he talks about the fact that they're in third place and not a lot that they would be able to do could move the needle and stop people from walking into a store and choosing a PlayStation or anything Nintendo based on the history and the expectation and just what people expect out of those platforms based on actual delivery of content in the past that's been good. I think it's great that he could see that and I think it's great that he admits that. I think it's also amazing that he says Starfield could be an 11 out of 10 and that's not going to force people to sell their PlayStation 5s or stop buying Nintendo products. One game is never going to do it. However, when he talks about not being able to compete and not being able to just make better games and have that move the needle, that could be true now. But in the past, that expectation could have been set by Microsoft if they had done that work. So for instance, when he talks about these sort of nefarious backdoor deals that make it hard for Xbox to be Xbox, and to be fair, he follows that up with, that's on nobody else, but us. So he's not using that as an excuse. He's not saying Sony makes some third-party deals that makes it difficult for Xbox to be Xbox. 
or Nintendo has these deals that make it hard for Xbox to be Xbox, Microsoft and Xbox realized that in the market that they were in in order to compete, they had to make things difficult for their competitors. They launched their Xbox 360 a full year before their competition, which essentially made it very difficult for Sony and the PlayStation 3. They got Mass Effect and Bioshock as de facto exclusives on their system because of that early launch. Because of those practices, because of that push to be better, they made it difficult. You're supposed to make it difficult on your competitors. The idea of forcing competitors not to even be able to come into a space to compete, that's different. That's something that Microsoft was trying to do by buying in the ground floor when it comes to mobile and services with Activision, Blizzard, and King, which is why that deal was shut down. But letting everybody come into the market and compete, but making it difficult for them by doing anything and everything you can isn't something that's new or isn't something that's bad. Microsoft did this in the past. Do you think it made it easy for Sony to be Sony, getting all of those Call of Duty map packs first on Xbox 360? Absolutely not. But what did Sony do? They doubled down on creating really great games. Exactly what Phil Spencer is saying won't make a difference now, made a difference then for Sony and PlayStation. And the idea that they're in the present and nothing that they can do, even if they make really good games, is gonna make people buy Xboxes over Playstations and Nintendos is correct but it dismisses the fact that they wouldn't be in this position if they actually did that in the past. There's this expectation that PlayStation and Nintendo gamers and consumers have. He mentions that in this interview. He says that nothing can make people stop buying PlayStations. One 11 out of 10 game isn't going to do it. But the reason, the reason that those consumers are still choosing those systems is because of that expectation and that delivery over every single generation of great content. They have this expectation that they're going to get what they want because they've gotten it in the past. Microsoft's in this position because they never delivered it in the past and now they're in a position where they're sort of catch 22. Well, even if we deliver it now, it's not gonna make a difference but let's forget the fact that we're in this position now because we didn't deliver it way back then. So I appreciate how honest and open he is, but there's still this sort of dismissal of, you're in this position because you put yourself here. Another great example of this is when he talks about losing the worst generation ever, the Xbox One generation, and he cites that that's the generation that most people built up their digital library. So moving to a different platform became almost impossible after that point. So that generation was the most important one to win and they didn't. But why didn't they win that generation? Again, it was because they focused in on everything else other than first party teams with a lot of talent, a lot of creativity and a lot of new IPs to pull people in to your ecosystem. If making great games that are 11 out of 10 aren't gonna move the needle for a box, what is the incentive to make those type of games to pull people into a service? Either way, you've gotta have content that's great. I feel like we would have gotten to this point already, but maybe now finally we're there. And that's the point where somebody there is going to go back and say, okay, what's coming out next? Starfield, guys, Gals, this has got to be stellar. Let's make sure that it's stellar. And we finally get something that's really, really great upon launch. Now it has to happen. It's just the odds. You've got Starfield, you've got Avowed, you've got Perfect Dark, you've got a bunch of stuff coming, Hellblade 2. Something has got to hit and hit hard. But I wanna stress, Phil Spencer says this, and this is the sentiment that I see that just isn't going away. Even if they have one AAA huge game that sets the industry on fire, it's not going to stop people from purchasing PlayStation 5s and Nintendo anythings because that expectation of quality and delivery was set a long time ago and they continue to deliver that. For Microsoft to move the needle, and it doesn't seem like they want to, they're going to have to consistently do the same thing that PlayStation as a brand and Nintendo did as a brand for a very, very long time. And that's do exactly what it is Phil Spencer said in this interview, won't move the needle, release really high quality games over the course of multiple generations. 
Let me know what you think about this interview. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments section below. Think about that like button. Think about that subscribe button. And I'll see you all in the next video.